Sonny Spira, Chuck Everson, congratulations on 100 podcasts. We are all so proud of you. Everybody in the Big East knows that you guys stand for what the Big East is all about. You probably wanted to kill each other when you were playing each other. But afterwards, great respect, great uh, memories of the Big East, and friendships for a lifetime. Thanks for sharing that with all of us. Thanks for Big East Rewind and keeping all of us connected to the Big East. And here's to 500 more, fellas. We're so proud of you. Welcome to this edition of the Big East Rewind, a big edition for us, our 100th episode of the Big East Rewind. I am your seven-foot host from Villanova, Chuck Everson, and my co-host for the 100th time <laughs> is the Cavity Cape Crusader, Root Canal <laughs> Royalty, that's Sweet Air, Sonny Sparrow. How are you, Sonny? Good, Chuck. I, I think I'm a little nervous tonight, man. I got, yeah, well, I got to tell you, I got, a little, I got a little butterflies, man. Yeah, You should. I mean, it's been a long road. We've had a great time so far. It's our 100th episode, as I stated. And, uh, you know, it's been great catching up with uh, all the guys that we've played with and against and, mm -hmm. you know, making new friends. Who knew that uh, Syracuse Orange Men and the Hoyas would, uh, would be best buddies? Who knew that, Sonny? Not, no, certainly no. not. That's for sure. I know, and it's public knowledge now, which is you know public put me knowledge in, put me in a and, tough spot. <laughs> yeah, and not not only that, but like those guys are some of the nicest guys in the whole conference. But nobody ever got to know these guys when we were playing. They were yeah, all, we weren't allowed. We weren't allowed to get behind the that's curtain. That's why they stayed about four hours away when we played at the Garden out in Rye, New York. You yeah. know, so that's that's what happens with that. But uh, it, it's been a whole lot of fun and and catching up. And and I get calls from former players and stuff and. Uh, you know, wanting to know what we're doing next and how we're doing. And now we're moving into the current day stuff. So it's been it's been a great ride. So today, without any further ado, Sonny, we have spared no expense here. That's right. Rewind for our big show. We covered we that in the A team, Sonny, the A team. It doesn't get any better than this. Honestly. That's right. It does not get any better than this. Uh, on play by play tonight, Sean McDonough, Mr. NHL Hockey is with us. How are you, Hello. Sean? Congratulations. I would have thought after a hundred shows, you'd remember where you went to college. I was there at the beginning. Thanks for, thanks for pointing that out, Sean. He was yeah. stammering. It, took you a you minute. Know, it isn't every day I get in the room with you three guys. So, you know. I'm telling you, I got butterflies. I know. And by the way, there was plenty of ado. If, if, if Raftery and Billis and I sat here much longer, we were going to be wondering, are we actually a part of this show? Are we just a live studio audience? Well, Sean, make yourself at home. And that's the kind of show we have. I am so glad that you're comfortable enough to bust balls right out of the gate. So appreciate that. So our our next guest is is Jay Billis. Uh, Jay Billis from ESPN is with us. Jay, thanks for coming in. Appreciate that. Sonny and Chuck, it's an honor to be on your 100th and final episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and of course, Nat, last but not certainly least, uh, the best color man in the business. He does a great job. He's been doing it for years and years. Our buddy, our pal, the great Bill Raftery. How are you, Bill? I'm doing great. It's interesting. It's your hundredth, and I'm getting close to my hundredth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, there you go. We got a lot to talk about. So uh let's start off bill i mean let's start off with some current day stuff you, you i saw you you were in the studio the last two nights uh talking about the, the the first two days of the season who impressed you out of the gate uh in the com in the league you mean yeah in the league. nationally uh i i thought marquette uh jumped out a little bit and villanova jumped out a little bit uh you know it's it's, it's interesting because i think there's at least in Jay's really good at this stuff. I, I think they've got six definites that could make the tournament. And maybe a break if somebody popped up late, like a Georgetown or somebody like that to be the seventh. So I think it's deep. Uh, a couple of teams have injuries. Xavier's one has two starters that are out. Uh, you know, the Seton Hall struggled a little bit. I thought yeah. Providence, because they're two studs. Uh, we're pretty impressive, but uh, I, I think it's going to be a <clears throat> it's going to be a five or six loss champion in the Big East this year. That's how tough it is. What do you okay. think, Jay? Well, first of all, everybody won their opening game, which is yeah. not true of every conference. We've seen some of the big shots struggle a little bit, but uh, I agree with Bill. I think Marquette may wind up being the best team in the league, and 
the Big East is going to be right up there, uh, I think, with uh, with the SEC and the Big 12 as the best conference in the country. So five losses, I mean, I, I don't disagree with that. You know, five losses could win the league. Uh, but most importantly, I think the the teams will be really tough by the time they get to postseason play. But But oftentimes these things are decided the strength of a league is decided by non-conference play and mm -hmm. all these teams have really good, the big East has a really good non-conference slate and uh, you know, Marquette's going to be out in Maui and that's one of the best uh, fields we've had in a while. Uh, so it's going to be difficult to win that thing, but I think they're, they're very well positioned to win it. Uh, Sean, I wanted to ask you about the New York Rangers. Are those guys for real or what? That's why I thought I was here. We're <laughs> going to break down the New York Rangers power. That's play. it. Uh, at least the podcast does remind me of the old Big Mondays where we've been on for about 10 minutes and I haven't said a word yet. But uh, <laughs> did you make up for it quickly? <laughs> he used to call us the filibuster twins when he would say, I'm Sean oh, McDonald yeah. along with Bill Rapper and Jay Billis. And we'd start and he'd start looking at his watch midway through. <laughs> hey, Jay, Jay, you mentioned Maui and I, I could always remember where, you know, we would go to Longy's five nights of the week. And Sean would say, I don't want to go there. I'm tired of that place. I need a change. And I said, okay, we'll go to Longies and we'll change the table we sit at. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason we weren't there five nights out of the week is we were only there five. If we were there seven, <laughs> we would have been there seven nights out of the week. So, so and Sean. All the times we sat there, we never got a break on the bill. Not, not a free dessert, nothing. Wow. Well, what's it? One night, wasn't it Walker, Sean, that picked up the whole bill? You know, the baseball player from Colorado? Uh, might have been. Yeah, Larry Walker. Yeah. Remember, he snuck out, never said anything. I don't, but there's a few nights out there that I don't remember as clearly as <laughs> my back. So, uh, yeah, he I, went I, home I with seven umbrellas, the little ones in glasses. My favorite one was when we stayed so late, you know, Raph, Raph shockingly wouldn't leave. And they were putting the chairs up on on top of the tables, and somebody came over and says, "Raph, we got to close up. I mean, we're going to lose our liquor license." And finally, they took the the final drink out of Raph's hands, and he stands up. He goes, "That's it. I'm not coming here anymore." <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the the restaurant, uh, the site, as I think we did talk about this, Jay, and and I didn't talk to Sean about it, was totally destroyed in the fire. And Peter had moved the restaurant up by the hotel area, Sean. Uh, you won't be going back, I guess, but Jay will. Yeah. And uh, the other boy opened one in Honolulu a number of years ago. Right. And then yeah. he moved it from the waterfront up to the, there's a, like a resort, like at Four Seasons or something. So, but the house that, uh, and, and Jay's got great memories of this, Sean. We visited with Wendy, his upstairs boudoir. Do you recall, Jay? And he had, I do. The, we, he had the lingerie on and it wasn't on the deck, obviously. We walked we walked around the corner at Bob Longy's house of this long hallway, and then his bedroom was at the end of the hallway. And when we made the, the right hand turn and got a glimpse of him, he was just inside the door and he had a desk in there like he was, you know, Johnny Carson at the Tonight Show. And he was wearing some like sarong around his waist, but he didn't have a shirt on. And, and he had all these lighters, like it was a 7-Eleven, you know, at the, at the counter. And, uh, and Raft walks in, he goes, put his shirt on. We don't need to see your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so sad when you watch the coverage of that. You know, as many times, I, I think I was there 15 times. I know, Bill, you were there more than 30. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I remember the first year Bill didn't go with us. You know, for a while it was uh, Bill and I, and then Jay joined us, and then Bill left and went to Fox and you know everybody there obviously knew Bill very well so there's this nice Hawaiian gentleman who sort of kept an eye on the parking lot where we would park right by the entrance to the gym where our TV truck was so we were there for two or three days going to the practices and the games hadn't started yet and then uh, I'm walking in the first day and I park and the guy gives me a little wave and he walks over he said Sean did Bill die <laughs> and I was like, well, sort of. He left ESPN. So, you know, it's just, 
but uh, uh, he was but very concerned end, that yeah. after 30 years, if Bill wasn't there, he must not still be with us. So, there. But, but Sean and Jay, the house that they had on the waterfront, mm -hmm. Bob's home, the only thing that was left was that uh, meditation tower at the top of the house. Everything totally burned to the ground, the home that he had, you know? So anyhow. Yeah. Well, just, Bob was, yeah, we shouldn't make light of it, but. So many good Bob memories. I was used to smoke in that house. Hence <laughs> <laughs> uh, the lighters. So, Sean, I'm going to ask you a basketball question. Now that Coach B has retired, they had a game yesterday. They're playing today. Did you, you notice a little man-to-man -man on the floor? Did you catch any of it? I, I did. You know, I uh, I was you know, kind of happy to see it, actually. And I think, you know, we all knew that was coming with Adrian. And, yep. uh yeah, you know, I turned it on. They were ahead of New Hampshire, twenty-five to six. I thought this was a nice start, and then I turned it back on. It was like a five-point game. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, wow. exactly. Yeah. And they brought the zone out when it got well. close. I mean, we, what's that? Yeah. They brought the zone out when it got close. That that but helped bet, them win I it. But they did. Yeah. The um, but you know, I, I obviously I hope they do well for a lot of reasons. But uh, you know, most notably because as we all know, Adrian is just a fantastic guy. And, yep. Uh, kind of person you cheer for whether you went to the school or not and I think you'll do a great job will you be working with Mr. Warmth I don't believe so you know I'm strictly hockey now once uh you know once you guys abandoned me they kind of threw me out of the college basketball thing but uh it, it's whoever works with him it's going to be an interesting experience <laughs> as we know Mr. Uh, Happy AJ, Coach AJ remember <laughs> the night I think Falk was at the head of the table we went to dinner with him. And, yeah, uh, David it was. Fall. It, remember, yeah, remember well, David well, it was uh, Mike. We, it was you, me, Mike. Mike Tarico was doing the game, mm -hmm. right. and uh, and Jim was. I thought Jim was sitting at the head of the table, but a uh, a fan came over and asked him for an autograph. Asked Beheim for an autograph, and Jim was eating. So he, the guy, was telling the story. I used to come to your basketball camp, and I did these told this like heartwarming story. And Jim signed it. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just kind of gave it to him. And then as soon as he walked away, Raf goes, hey, Jimmy, would it kill you to shake the guy's hand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's so good to see you guys all together again. I know you don't get to do this much, uh, you know, like you used to. You Thank know, God. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> the last time... You know, I guess the big time that you guys were together was the six overtime game at the Garden. Talk about that from your guys' perspective. I know, I know, we've talked to you about it, Jay, on the show before, but talk to talk about the perspective that you guys had, and and you know what was going on in your minds as, as the game progressed and kept going on and on and on. Uh, Jay, you want me to jump in? Yeah. Uh, you know that the thought I've had ever since. We all knew how talented Sean was, and I don't think ESPN appreciated him enough. And that game, I think, solidified, not that he needed any pat on the back, his career. I mean, they knew they had a gem. And, and it was his show, and I think Jay would agree with it. I mean, it was a play-by-play -play man's delight, uh, the action, the turmoil, the competitiveness, and is the basket good or not good? Uh, but uh, I'll just finish with this one thought, which they both have heard. The next day, we I, get, I think we got back to the hotel at one thirty or 2 in the morning. And uh, one writer said, well, what did you think of the game? I said, well, it's the first time I've been out that late in New York where I got home and my wife wasn't mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Raph is right, though. Um I mean, I, we're, we're all really proud of, of the broadcast, I think. It was yeah. somewhat of an unremarkable game up until the, the overtime started. I think if the game had been had ended in regulation, it we would have felt like, well, it was just another you know really good Big East tournament game. But I, I think Raph and I know we talked about it uh, after the game, was what a pleasure it was to listen to Sean wa uh, work that – you know, I, the, the the pride that Raph and I took was we did not get in the way of his calls. Um, and, you know, when he overtime number six and all the things that he did, it was just a master class in meeting the moment. And uh, 
uh, just a stunning, it, it was a stunning thing to be a part of. And I think, uh, you know, I'm honestly the outside of that, I'm proudest of, I didn't have to get up and use the can because that was a long, that was a long time to go without relieving yourself. <laughs> that, and that, 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 that was, was going to be, that was my that biggest was, question. How did you guys survive the bathroom? How did you pull that off? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember actually having to go either, which is unusual. Uh, but the, at first of all, I appreciate what they both said. And, um, you know, it was, uh, uh, especially, you know, it's the first time I never felt compelled to interrupt either one of them while they were talking. <laughs> 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 they were both so articulate and, and right on point in their description of that broadcast. Uh, no, I think, you know, a, a, it was a collective effort and it wasn't the three of us. It was also, uh, you know, it was one of those nights and a lot of times in doing this, uh, you know, broadcast sports TV, the game can be great, but you feel like, you know what, our telecast wasn't very good. The game can be, you, you can think you're great, but if the game stinks, nobody really says anything, you know? So, but it was one of those nights where everybody was, you know, the producer, the director, the graphics people, the camera people. I mean, Peter Dingle was our center court handheld camera guy. And he had that perfect shot that you saw the ball was still on Eric Devendorf's fingertip as the yeah. clock expired. So, um, you know, if he didn't have that shot, they're going to count the basket and, you know, none, none of this happens. And as Bill said, I probably wouldn't have been working for ESPN a month later because uh, it, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, and then just all of the remarkable things that happened in that game. And we've talked about it before, but, you know, there were so many incredible performances and guys diving on the floor in the sixth overtime, some of the best players in the country. And, you know, I remember Justin Thomas coming in, I don't know, it was the fifth overtime and, you know, he was fresh as a daisy because he, right. I think he had played five minutes the whole year and everybody else is looking at him like, cut the crap with the jump. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, and then um and to me you know the most remarkable thing was that Syracuse was never ahead even by one point for one second in any of the first five overtimes you know to, to play 25 minutes they constantly be behind or tied behind or tied and keep forcing it into the next overtime I mean that's something you know nothing like that game will ever happen again but that's something I'm sure will never happen again that a team would well, survive five overtimes without ever being ahead yeah. I mean, and, and it wound up being what a 10 point game at the end, right? It was, you know, was, I don't remember the final score. I should. Right. And to Jay's point, like if you said, tell me one thing that happened in regulation, I'm not sure I could. Right. But I can tell well, you yeah. a lot of things that happened in the six overtimes, we, we all could. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I you know, <laughs> Bill and Jay, remember this, you know, you, ESPN, you get to do all the wrap ups and everything. And, you know, now sports center and deportes and, <laughs> ESPN ate the Ocho, you know, so now we're still sitting there an hour after the game uh, serving the, some of the other parts of the company. And as we're there from across the floor at Madison Square Garden, out of the tunnel, here comes Mr. Happy Coach. He's like, you think we're in the tournament now? Or <laughs> like, Any chance? So it's like, so a lot of great memories. What what kind of stuff goes on between the three of you guys as this is unfolding, like during the commercial breaks and stuff like that? What are some of the things that n the average person wouldn't know unless they were one of you, one of you three? I don't I remember pretty early on that it was something special, right? And yeah. I mean, and, and, and the other thing I'm proud of is that when the game was over, we all stood up and clapped, which I don't think any of us had done before. So. Right. Right. So That's one thing I remember. And not just the players and the coaches, but the officiating was great in that game too. And you know, those yeah. guys are out there for six overtimes. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody talks <laughs> about that one. Yeah, they were great. Yeah, I don't I'm sorry, Sean. I, I don't think we talked strategy at all, Jay. It was just like overwhelmed that like, can you believe this? You know, be a just being a part of this fantastic effort by both teams. But uh, I don't think we said, hey, we'll try this, we'll try that. What do you think? Any of that stuff. It was just trying to enjoy the moment. Yeah, I think for, for you and me, that was it. Sean had to, to deal with the truck and making sure that he was on top of everything, which he always is. But for us, like that, that's the beauty of working for the, when the three of us were together working with Sean is that, you know, he did all the heavy lifting and then Raft and I could just kind of jump in here and there. And, uh, and I'm not just saying that it's the truth. And it was, it, it was easy for us. Uh, and our, our biggest thing was, 
we would always, you know, the when we started every game, the producer would say, uh, you know, Jay, you take this team and Raft, you take this team. And then Raft would always go, why went the other team? You know, trying <laughs> to create some controversy of stuff we didn't care about. But the the beauty of of that that trio was, you know, I, I think we were I really enjoyed everything on the air, but it was off the air that made it off the charts fun. Um, we would be together all the time and something would always happen. We, we were always laughing. God forbid you made a mistake because the other two <laughs> would jump you and never let it go. And I, and then if, if one of the other two made a mistake, I would jump in and, and join in with the other one. But, you know, we had a, uh, one of my favorites, was we, we would try to have lunch every Monday when we were doing big Monday, we would try to have lunch because Raph might be doing a game on Sunday or Saturday with CBS and then would, would shoot in. And so we would oftentimes kind of the, the three of us would be together. We, so we'd have lunch and we were in Philadelphia to do a Villanova game. And uh, we, we meet for lunch and Raph comes in, Sean and I, I think we're already sitting there and, uh, and, and he gets in from doing a CBS game. So Sean says, uh, I was, uh, <laughs> How was the, the weekend? How was the game? How was Vern? And Raph says, oh, we had a great time. We went out to dinner the night before. And Vern and I, we talked about the business. And we talked about all the great broadcasters. Your name didn't come up. <laughs> <laughs> and the timing was so perfect like even sean had to laugh at that oh, one. and every time raf would come you know raf's worked with everybody in this business a hundred times and uh, so he he'd arrive on Monday. He says, "Oh, I worked with Spiro Ditas Saturday, a real pro." <laughs> every, every other play-by-play -play guy was a real pro. So, it's so uh, nice to work with a real pro. Yeah. You know, so there are a lot of running jokes that were worse. Yeah, yeah, actually so funny the fiftieth time. Sean, remember uh, you're introducing the referees in Maui, and you got hurt. <laughs> When, when Jay was saying, God forbid anybody should make a mistake, that's the first thing I should have thought of. Why don't you go ahead and tell that if you want? No, I just remember that. Well, Sean, Sean was the introducing the referees, and, yeah. and there was a guy named Murph Shapiro. Oh, yeah. But his, his, as, daughter, as Sean... his daughter is the basketball coach at Binghamton Women's. Oh, you're kidding. Beth Ann, yeah, yeah. So as Sean was uh, was introducing the the officials, he happened to look down at the at the the score sheet that had the officials' names, and and it turns out you know Murph's first name is Bruce, and so he he wound up call, saying Moose, so he called him Moose Shapiro, <laughs> and and of course we jumped all over and say what what are you saying that Shapiro should push himself away from the table a little bit like he's getting a little big. <laughs> And we were laughing, and, and and later on, it wasn't five minutes later, I mispronounced Shamanad. I was I was thinking about something else, and I said Shamanyad, and uh, and oh we, and then I I started getting the wrath, and it was not a not a good night. Yeah. You know, Jay and Sean, we played Bonnie's years ago, and uh, they used to have a casket, and then we put the visiting mascot into the casket and they would bring them out. So like we're gonna have one of my great years, you're probably 11 and 20 at the time. And the <laughs> casket is, has a pirate in it. And uh, I get the notice that Murph Shapiro's work in the game. And Murph was very good to local teams. Uh, <laughs> <He's> Rochester guy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and anyhow, I, I said to Hadi, I said, oh, we got no shot here. So we're walking out. I took the pirate out and I got in the casket. Right? <laughs> so I'm lying in the casket and uh, I look up at Hadi. I said, Hadi, I don't think the priest back in South Orange would think this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I did get out of the casket and then by the end of the night, Murph put me back in the casket. <laughs> Our favorite thing was, you know, when you come on the air, who can land the haymaker, you know, the fastest. And I had the advantage because I was the one who brought us on the air. So I knew before I said anything to either one of these two, if I was going to deliver a little zing, I better, but frequently I wouldn't. And uh, 
So as, as Jay said, you know, one time, you know, every week he'd take a team and Bill would take the other team and they'd highlight a player on the team. So Bill's talking about Chris Thomas from Notre Dame. Oh, well, he's a playmaker and he's a, you know, he's a good defender and he passes the ball really well, uh, makes his teammates better. Wouldn't it be nice to work with someone like that, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, to, hey, to that point, uh, Jay and Sean, how about, Miller at Notre Dame as a big night. Go ahead. <laughs> that was that was our first game uh, together. Uh, was it Danny, really? Yeah, that was the first time because I when when they dropped me in on on your crew, I was mortified. I thought, my God, you know, it's like being dropped in the middle of a long time marriage. Like, what? You know, I'm the third wheel here. This and I was sitting between you guys. I was a little cramped, by the way, and a shower wouldn't kill either one of you. <laughs> but but I was uh, you know I, I wasn't sure like what do I do and I don't want to get in the way of this and that was uh, evident yeah yeah <laughs> and that, that, I got over that um, but late in the game so Danny Miller who had transferred in if I remember right from Maryland uh, to Notre Dame uh, makes this great play and Sean calls the play and then Raph jumps in and says uh, says it's Miller time and you know how I love hearing that. And without missing a beat, Sean jumps in and says, except on Big Monday, brought to you by Bud Light. And <laughs> I was like, this is the perfect place to be. I'd There's nowhere I'd rather be than this. It was Bud so Light great. had only been the main sponsor of Big Monday for like as long as there was Big Monday. <laughs> it's oh. Miller time. We all know how much I love Miller time. I'm like, oh, gosh. Yeah, Jay, and we're going to break because, you know, so because, you know, whatever, I think Danny Miller hit a bunch of threes in a row or something. They've never played Connecticut, calls time out. So, all right, Raph, we're going to break. Replace. You take it. Oh, yeah, Miller, Miller, Miller. And, and literally, it's like four, three. And I'm like, <laughs> hope he stops talking because I need to be able to say, except on Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. So, <laughs> Jay, beautiful. remember remember walking in buildings and, you know, all the crew would be in the end zone in the morning. Uh, for the shoot arounds and uh, we would stop and I used to remember saying uh, who's the audio guy here <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, be occasionally a stranger and said I am I said oh you are in trouble tonight <laughs> you ever work with Sean McDonough <laughs> well, I have a I had a good health reason for why I was uh, a little difficult from time to time because when I wound up having my uh, inner ear and slash brain surgery in, in 2012. That's when they discovered that I didn't have a, a bone was missing between my brain and my inner ear. So to me, things that aren't loud for other people were super loud. So I feel bad because I used to complain all the time. Like, why is that so loud? And they'd come out and put the headset on. They'd look at me like, it's not loud. I'm like, yes, it is. It's clearly loud. Well, turns out I didn't. So uh, I'm not as, I'm not as difficult anymore, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> You got it worked out. <laughs> well, it worked out great. Luckily, no after effects from the surgery at all. As far as I can tell. <laughs> I've got radio good. stations in this ear now. I've got a music. I've got a classical music station across. Boston. Good thing you didn't have any problems with your teeth. What would you have done? That's a good question. <laughs> Now that you talked about a break, you talked about commercial breaks. That's exactly what we have to do right now with our you new sponsor. Oh, we have Third Eye we Consulting <laughs> Property Management Solutions. We'll be right back with Jay Raft and Sean right after this. Third Eye Consulting is the name you can trust when it comes to property management. Our good friend Peter Haber runs Third Eye Consulting. Whether you're a landlord, an out-of-state homeowner, or an investor, Third Eye Consulting provides innovative property management solutions that are tailored just for you. They'll take the hassle out of property ownership and turn it into a profitable experience. They've done this for many others. Visit their website at thirdeyeconsultingllc.com to learn more. Peter is here to make your life easier and your investments more profitable. So if you want peace of mind and success in property management, Choose Third Eye Consulting. They're not just professionals. They're your trusted partners in the business. Reach out to them to help take care of your properties. Hey, Chuck and Sonny. Wow, 100 shows. I have to offer you congratulations. That's great. You know, it's taken 100 shows and Chuck still doesn't know how to pronounce Syracuse. 
It's Syracuse, not Syracuse. You know, maybe, maybe by the 200th show, you'll get it. But I have to congratulate you guys for uh, keeping the Big East alive. I have great memories of the conference, and uh, you guys are doing good. And, and listen, uh, feel free to call me anytime to come back on the show. I'm going to turn you down, but feel free to call anyway. Take care, guys. Keep up the good work. <laughs> okay, we're back with Jay, Sean, and Raft. And, you know, guys, I guess it's really not work when you're working with some of your friends and you're having such a good time and both on and off the air, on, on the road, on road trips and stuff. Uh, you know, tell us some more stories on some of the road trips you guys have taken together and uh, some of the towns you've been through. You've been everywhere, all of you. And uh, talk about that for a second, if you will. Uh, <laughs> there's so yeah, don't all jump in at I, once, Sean. You know, yeah. Chuck, the, the thing that was super sad, you know, and, and we, I think we all feel blessed to have had this opportunity that we had for quite a while. But, you know, I remember when Bill called and he said he was thinking about leaving ESPN. I was like, well, I really don't want to. I love it. Da, da, da. But it was a much better deal. I said, hey, we'll, we'll come visit you. you. You have to go. But it was really sad because, you know, I think, it, you know, I, I don't want to offend anybody else, but I, I think it's, I know it is fair to say, accurate to say, I knew at that moment, I will never have as much fun doing this with any group in any sport as I did with these two. Um, you couldn't have had more fun. <laughs> you know, it, you looked forward to Sunday when you were heading out because you were going to go be with two of your best friends and people you love and admire the most. And you knew you're going to be a part of a entertaining show. You know, you, you know, if the game was great, you know, the, the, these guys had all the great information. And if it wasn't, then we would try to make it fun. So, uh, you know, it's we could write a book. I mean, we can we could do hours. Good. on this. Um uh, you know, the, some of them, though, you know, I, I got to get you know, the clearance from from the other <laughs> my co-conspirators. Uh, one of my favorites was in South Bend. I was just uh, thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't want uh, uh, to run it by the... Uh, is this the snowstorm? Yes. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, that was clear. Easy. <laughs> we did a Saturday game at at, uh, at Notre Dame, and then we had a big Monday at Marquette. So uh, we had all arrived separately. And when you go into South Bend, sometimes you fly right in there. Sometimes you go to Chicago. Drive. Anyway, we, we all had a rental car, and we were all going to drive up to Milwaukee from South Bend together on a, a Sunday. So we decided, okay, we'll meet at 10 a.m. You know, we'll pull out in front of the hotel, and then we'll go to the little airport there in South Bend. And two of us will, Bill and I, will return our cars because, of course, Jay always had the, you know, the big, the fancy chauffeur, the big SUV, right? So we would return our Yugos. And uh, so anyway, the, uh, so as I'm walking into the garage there, it's very cold out, and, you know, and uh, the middle of winter and Jay as usual is already pulling out on time early. Bill um, is walking through the garage and he's got one of those little key things like he's trying to honk the horn and, trying to find the car <laughs> yeah he's going up and down the rows so i get in my car i pull up bill is still going up and down he's got his little you know suitcase that he's dragging around it's freezing i said bill get in so we get in what are we looking for he said i don't know you know it's a rental car it's white <laughs> the malibu it's you know so we literally go up and down every row two or three times in the parking lot of the south end marriott and uh so finally, I said, by any chance, and I knew there was a good chance because he goes to this, like we talked about longies, he goes to the same restaurant and every time we go to every, I said, uh, did every, now about uh, Parisi's, right? I said, by any chance, did you go to Parisi's the other night and maybe have somebody give you a ride back from the restaurant and you left your car there? He said, yes, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now we have to drive to Parisi's and the car is like, you can't even make it up. You know, it's like a Fairly Brothers movie. It is entombed <laughs> ice and snow, and you know, like we're we're getting the stuff out to try to hit the lock to you know be able to unlock the door. <laughs> and uh, so we talk about you know being the first one to deliver the shot. So Monday night we come in. Well, welcome everybody to the Bradley Center. You know, it's Marquette and whoever they're playing and. Uh, I'm Sean McDonough along with Jay Billis and the star of Dude, Where's My Car? <laughs> <laughs> Which nobody else knows what that means except us. And we didn't care, right? As long as we were entertained, 
America was going to have to deal with it. So that was one of my favorites. I don't think it was the same Marquette trip, but <clears throat> uh, Danny Gavitt was with us. And uh, I know for some reason, I'm, I was the last to get to the restaurant, to Moe's. And Jay was in the process of wearing or attempting to wear glasses. Am I right, Jay? Is that right? Yeah, it was, it was the night of the uh, BCS championship game. And Sean was calling, calling the game. So he wasn't with us. That was one of the few times we weren't together. So Dave Pash was uh, a real uh, pro sitting, a yeah. real pro <laughs> was sitting in for so Sean. So we had decided, Raph and I decided, let's go to, let's go to Moe's Steakhouse. We'll get a private room, get the game up on the big screen and we'll have dinner and a few drinks and all that after the, after the Marquette was game, the game was over. So we went there, I, uh, Pash and I got there first. And I think Raph had gotten together, try to pick up Danny Gavitt or whatever. And uh, usually when we went out, one of us would, one of the three of us would try to, you know, get the check before, you know, slip a credit card to the, the waiter or something. So we didn't have to argue about it at the end, like trying Usually to get the check. Usually Jay, by the way, in the interest of accuracy and fairness, uh, Jay is yeah, very generous. Sean thing. was very good at getting the breakfast check. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and bagels then the, are expensive. He was, usually, bagels. he was usually in the cloakroom when the check came. <laughs> so so I had gotten there first and then uh, I, I it, this was about the time my eyes went and I, I, I couldn't see uh, up close, but I didn't have any readers with me. So I asked the waiter, what's a good, you know, because I knew Raph's going to want to have a glass of wine. So what's a good, good bottle of cab or something? And, and he says, well, sir, this one, he shows it to me. And I'm like, that's great. And, and Pash says, Jay, that's a $300 bottle of wine. And so I figured, okay, well, I'll get the check. I said, don't worry about it, Dave. Like, you know, it's so great to work with a real pro. I'm picking this up. <laughs> but I figured, okay, we'll make a different wine selection after that. So Raph gets there. Uh, think, you know, everybody starts laughing, have a good time, ordering dinner. And he kept ordering more wine. And I had totally spaced on, wait a minute, don't keep getting the same thing because that's not a price point we want to pay. And, uh, and so Raft had snuck his credit card to the, uh, to the waiter before <laughs> I could. sorry, I missed this. So, <laughs> so the waiter comes and gives Raft the little leather thing with the check in it. And Raft takes it and he thinks, yeah, I got one over on you. I got the check. And then he opens it up and his eyes get really big. He goes, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's almost got tears coming out of his eyes. And he, he looks at me, he goes, would you mind ordering from the Irish side of the menu just once? <laughs> I'm like, no, Raph, let me have it. He goes, no, I got it. Oh, geez. <laughs> Sign the thing. Uh, those were great nights, though. I do miss him to, to uh, jump on uh, Sean's comments, too. Uh, you know, you reflect back and, and think that, you know, the game was the icing on it. Uh, but just to be with these guys, and uh, it, it's almost like, and this is probably not being modest, the perfect team because nobody cared. Mm -hmm. Like just, who, who, you know, whoever had it or felt comfortable with saying something that it, it just, the flow and the feel was uh, delightful. And just add on that night before, the night after uh, of the game, uh, I, don't, I just don't think you can replicate it anymore. No, and, and for me personally, you know, to be able to to work with it, just as Sean said, to be able to work with your best friends is uh, uh, is a blessing that that you can't duplicate. But you know, professionally, for me to sit alongside, and I'm not just saying this; I really believe this. The best play-by-play -play guy that's ever lived, and the best color analyst in basketball that's ever lived. Um, that that how lucky could I have been? And and two two people who off the air love people and Raph couldn't wait to get to the arena to go into the like I never wanted to go into the locker room before a game uh you know I saw him the coaches that shoot around and all that stuff but Raph went in and he wanted to see people because because he genuinely loved them it, it wasn't because he's was looking for extra information he'd make a joke like give us something will you we got careers here but he just <laughs> wanted he just wanted to see his friends and everybody in those arenas were were friends and through Sean and, and Raph, especially in the Big East, which I was somewhat of a newbie to, 
uh, I was able to develop deep friendships because of the the longtime friendships they had. And so I, I can't be more grateful for, for our time. Yeah. We've all been interviewed a bunch of times, Chuck, about uh, articles about wrath. And the one thing I always say is if you don't like wrath, there's something wrong with you, you know? And I think you guys know that too, as we oh, yeah. I've never met a person who's no more universally well loved, liked, respected, uh, admired. So, and you know, Jay, uh, you know, his is on TV is, you know, he's opinionated as he'd be the first to admit. And, you know, it's, it's, um, not the same sort of warm, lovable persona as Bill, but Bill would just, Jay is a great human being. He is an incredibly loyal friend. You know, I think he's that friend, they, maybe because he's a lawyer. If you had the one phone call and you had to call somebody uh, who you knew uh, would be there for you, you know, he's that guy. And uh, and that's what made it special. Right? To be able to do these great games was great, right? We're, we're all blessed to do what we do. And I don't think any of us take it for granted. I thank God every day that I get to do what I always want to do since I was five years old. But, you know, any experience that you have in life, it's the people that you share it with mm -hmm. and to share it with these two guys. Um, you know, it's uh, I'm going to get choked up at the, you know, and I miss it. I really do. You know, we, I'm doing some great things now that I'm really enjoying and working with great people. But, you know, just reminiscing like this makes me think, you know, damn, I'd kill for one more of those Monday nights, both on and off the air. Well, I still think there's, even though this is a competitive business, I still think our, our companies should get together and say, all right, the three of us should do one game on, on Fox or whatever, and then one game on ESPN Yeah, and get Shouldn't the band be hard. back together. No, it would be really fun. hard because, because Raptor, you know, all of Raptor's demands, you know, <laughs> he's going to have to have certain things in his dressing room. And I was going to say, does imagine. he have a big list like Van Halen? Now all the different things he has to have in his dressing room <laughs> for a game. Well, somebody's going to have to print out his boarding pass. He's probably still doing that. <laughs> I was just thinking. Now, I, now I have the app. I have the app now. Oh, and do you? you? Me, yeah, I'm really way ahead of the game, but you're right. They used to stand <laughs> behind me while I would try and print out my board, and they would never help me either. they just stand there and laugh because then I'd have to go to the front desk and ask them to do it. Yeah, we yeah. were at the, I remember we were at the, the South Bend Marriott, and Raft, there's a little kiosk there where you can print a boarding pass out. And we're waiting, we're waiting to go drive over to the game. And he's like <laughs> pushing the little buttons and I can't figure this thing out. He's got his little glasses on. And I said, Raph, what are you doing? He goes, I'm, I'm printing my boarding pass out. Well, you can do that at the airport. We got to go to the game. He goes, well, I'm trying to save time. <laughs> I'm trying to save time. This is, a, this is not saving time. This is called wasting time. Hey, hey Sean, there, uh, I'm going to be running out in a second, yep. but I, Tell the story about, you know, Sean runs this wonderful golf outing uh, that Jay's attended, and I've attended numerous times in honor of his dad. And mm, uh, great the, one year, <laughs> the one year, Sean, where somebody fainted. Do you recall? <laughs> Sean? At the too, Boston Harbor Hotel. Yeah. 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 Do you remember? I do remember, but I'm trying to remember the, it was about the Bayheim. funny part of it. It was about Bayheim. You were up the oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm, uh, you know, we have the, uh, this charity celebrity golf tournament that these guys are nice enough to come to. And uh, so we have the party the night before at the, at the Boston Harbor Hotel, very nice function in the wharf room right there in the water. So we have a speaking program and I introduce people and the doctor talks about the, you know, the fun that we started in memory of my dad to try to cure uh, cardiac amyloidosis. And anyway, I'm in the middle of speaking and a gentleman collapses like right in the front of the stage. So I jump down, other people come over. There are obviously doctors in the room. They tend to him. So uh, he's, he's fine. He just felt a little faint. He was actually trying to get one of the doors to get outside to, for some fresh air. So uh I'm starting uh, back up to the um, podium. I'm trying to remember who said the funny thing. Was it Gary Williams or one of you? Guys? No, you did. Was you it said me? It. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm walking back up and they, someone said, well, he just felt face, I felt faint. And he, uh, and I said, uh, no, that's not what happened. Uh, 
he was talking to Bayheim and he was just so bored he toppled over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the place erupted. Uh, so, that yeah. was the same night, Sean, that uh uh had a had a we had a mutual friend there that Raf hadn't met Raf yet. So I, I we were standing having a drink and I introduced him to Raf and uh, his name's Andrew and Raf says, uh, where'd you go to school, kid? And uh, Andrew says, uh, I went to Harvard. And Raf goes, Well, that's a conversation ender. <laughs> well hey, listen guys we really appreciate you coming out i i know bill's got to get to dinner and uh thanks for coming out and hanging with us i'm glad we were able to put the band back together at least for a little while it was really great listening to all you guys and uh telling stories and well, you know you I can tell, you can tell we'll how get to close hear you some uh, stories about your 100 uh shows and what's this was started. this was fantastic we yeah could, uh, could do that another time this was better than anything that we sonny and i could put together it was nice to just say here you go we're just going to hang out with you guys for uh for an evening so thanks all again right, guys. Thanks, i'm sure thanks, we'll sonny. see you all on the road bill i'm sure we'll see you down at school yeah. at some point all right yeah and sean and jay great to hear you and uh look forward to seeing you guys yeah. thanks Honor to be sonny, with uh, you thanks sonny, coach. thanks for representing hey. syracuse and remembering where you went to school very yeah. very important thing <laughs> That is an important thing. <laughs> Even though there's a lot to forget. Yep. <laughs> oh, if only you had gotten in. Hey, Sean, I lost both these two guys to recruits. I lost right. both he, Jay and Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Sonny was both Jay and our, my host at Syracuse. Hey, Beheim is smart. He put the guys he didn't want with Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And I delivered. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Right. All Bye -bye. right, guys. Thank See you, guys. guys. Sonny and Chuck, by the way, it sounds like a, a soft shoe team. I hope you can still dance. By the way, congratulations on your 100th show. You've done a marvelous job all these years. All the people you've interviewed, all the people that you've made shows so uh, charming and, and live. So keep that work going. And don't forget the Big East, too. The marvelous job you did with the Big East. Really, one of the great backers. We appreciate it, and we thank you. So, Sonny, that was our 100th episode of the Big East Rewind, and what an episode it was with Jay Billis, Bill Raftery, and Sean McDonough, the A-team of broadcasting college basketball. You know, the stories were incredible. Everything uh, was great and those guys uh, you could tell were best of buddies uh, on and off uh, uh, the court so uh, we really say thank you to the three of them for sharing their night with us and as always the Big East Rewind was produced and directed by Nick Chico Chorus and Daryl Gurney and our friends over at Boundless Ventures you know you can get us on social media wherever uh, whatever uh, social media you want to go on, just put Big East Rewind in the search bar. Uh, we are wherever you get your podcasts. Again, put Big East Rewind in the search bar and uh, and you can see the show on YouTube, on our YouTube channel by putting Big East Rewind in the search bar. And we ask you to like, subscribe and share it with your friends. And don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified when the next show drops. Well, it's been wonderful. We have to say thank you to a lot of people, Sonny. It's been wonderful having it's a hundred shows. I can't even believe it, you know. Um, you know, Chuck, one one thing we gotta say thank we gotta say thank you, first of all, to our spouses. Yeah. For not only putting up with it, but actually supporting us through all this stuff. Yeah, they've been you great. Know, they this doesn't get done in a vacuum and and like our home life is very supportive of of the things that we want to do. So I thank my wife, I thank your wife, um, and, and, you know, Daryl and Nick, and now the folks at Boundless, but you know, the significant others are a huge role and that yep. doesn't happen, uh, in a vacuum. And today's show was special in that we got to watch pros at work and, you know, what better example of, you know, maybe someday, you know, we'll be <laughs> not mentioned in the same breath, but at least in the same building how about that listen sonny we call ourselves <laughs> professional journalists but those guys are the pros they're hall of fame journalists yeah so, they got it in the arena 
and outside of the arena. Really, really was incredible to to watch that and uh, watch and people work. Of, you know, and they got cooking, and they got a little bit emotional and personal. You could see it's not it's not makeup. It's not funny. No. It's real. No, it's all good stuff. Yeah. So. Well, thanks a lot for joining us for our 100th episode of the Big East Rewind. As always, take care and good night. Thanks, folks.